Hello everybody, today I'm going to share with you this Hubble 250 watt high pressure sodium floodlight. Now I already have a video of one of these, but it is the older version. This is a slightly newer version from the um, really old one that I have, and but it isn't the newest version by any means. I have a even newer version than th of this uh, that I picked up with the older uh, version ones. I've been saying version a lot here, but hopefully you're understanding. The uh, newer ones I have in a different video. Those are 400 watt metal halide Hubble floods, and I believe they're on my channel somewhere. But I never got around to making videos of the original 250 watt high pressure sodium versions. Now the older version, the really old one that I have that is corroding and is in a separate video, that I got two of. One of them was very badly water damaged, and the other one was in really great shape. So the one that was in great shape, I kept the way it was, and the one that was water damaged, I decided to convert, once cleaned up, to 200, or I mean, sorry, 175 watt mercury vapor. As that works very well for that um, fixture, it's different and unique. This one is in between the old and the new. It is um, slightly updated from the really old version, and there's obviously some things that you'll notice here where they start cheaping out on some aspects of the light. Now interesting to note, this light is about one inch deeper than the really old one. So it's, it's, it's sitting like this, it's actually taller than the other one by, you know, about so much. And um, why they did that, I'm not too sure, but that's what they did. So here we have the front of the fixture. Obviously we can see the I think it's a Philips Elto bulb in there, because you can see a little bit of green still in the dimple at the top. Now, the first thing that I notice with this fixture is it doesn't have the Hubble name here anymore. They got rid of that. It's not embossed in there or, you know, uh, molded in anymore. They still have the caution information at the top, but they got rid of the, um, the uh, Hubble name. Now, you can see on the really old one, they had a sticker here on the bottom, and the sticker that is here now is just warning information. But if you want to get actual information about the fixture itself, they put this sticker here. And it's kind of hard to read, so we'll see if we move the camera around a bit, if we can read some of it. Um, you can kind of see the catalog number there, very faintly. Um, supply wire, this is a multi-tap fixture. If I run it like this, you can kind of see with the glare of all the lights information about it. So you can see 250 watt, but it's very um, sun bleached. I'm guessing that was just a UL sticker or something to that nature. Obviously we have our mount here, which can be obviously mounted and then tilted to whatever angle you'd like. Now if we turn it upwards, or down here, so this is the bottom of the fixture, this part right here, on the other fixture it would have been metal. But this one it's plastic, and in the new version I believe they just did away with it altogether. This um, box at the bottom of the floodlight. Now in the old version, inside would be a capacitor and igniter, and I believe that's the same story here. And obviously your cord would come in right here, and I'll get one of those so we can turn this on in this video. But um, yeah, it's plastic and not metal anymore, so there's an area that they decided to cheap out a little bit. And um, yeah, down here is where they made it a little deeper, and I'm guessing that's because of the ballast inside. Now, if you may remember the older version that I have, it had two ballasts inside of it, and we did get to look at how they are wired. But I don't know if this one still has two or if it's just one. And just like the other version, we still have these clips. So you just clip them up. And they pop right off. And we can open up the fixture. There you go. It's not the best thing to have it sitting like that. And there. So, we're greeted with the bulb, which we can take out. Wow, it's really in there. So here we have the bulb. It is a 
I knew that was going to tip over because it's it's heavier on that end for some reason. Um, Phillips 250 watt Elto, nothing too special about it. It does have the weird dimple there. And we do have the dimple at the top with some of the green still remaining for the bulb. So, yep, just a typical Phillips Alto bulb of the time. Now, yeah, this is heavier. Let's see if I can bend this mount down. There, that'll support it a bit. So, another thing to note is that this reflector in here is the exact same as the older version, so there's no change there. No change in the mounting of the socket either. So, again, I'm going to take this out so we can see what's beneath. Okay, so I took all the screws out and I already popped out the reflector. And obviously we need to, again, remove the socket as well because there's not enough room to slide the reflector over to get it out. So, we'll take this out. We got our socket. And this one just has a single ballast underneath. So again, same exact uh, flimsy metal reflector there. And, well, there's the ballast. Obviously, this is a slightly newer fixture, so they redesigned it so that it could accommodate the taller ballast. Obviously, those separate ballasts were shorter and separate. Where here, they must have had the technology then at the time to combine the two together. That might have been a very early high-pressure sodium fixture. I, I'd believe it if it, if it was. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they function the same. It's just different technology. Uh, or way of wiring them. So here is the ballast. Let me turn the camera around so you can actually see this without having to read it upside down. There you go. I'm not going to try to read it upside down, but at least it's right side up for you. Put you back on the tripod here. And, well, that's the ballast in here. Obviously very clean. This fixture is incredibly clean. Um, I, get, I don't think I already said where I got this. When I picked, uh, when I got the other four um, wide light floodlights, this came with those four wide lights, this fixture. Um, so it was kind of like a bonus throw-in thing, but it's in really great condition. It's, it's amazed. Uh, I am personally amazed how good of condition it is in. Obviously, I don't think it was installed very long before everything was converted to LED, so the inside could stay very nice. Obviously, that label is sun bleached, but that, that happens. So I'm going to put this back together, and we'll take a look inside that compartment. Removing the cover from the bottom, we can find the capacitor and the starter there as well, hidden underneath all these wires. There's the capacitor, obviously, and plenty of wires. It is a multi-tap ballast, so we get, um, I believe, 120, 208, 240, and 277. This fixture, I think, originally was wired for 277, because it looks like that here. But then, the 120 is also stripped at some point, because there's a wire nut over it. So, um, maybe I tested it once, and then never put a cord on it. I'm not too sure. But I'm going to go ahead and find a cord, and these I'm going to let these screws fall out. But here's the cover. We can see a piece of like filtering material here uh, for filtering the water. I don't really know why that matters. Probably just to keep things out, I think, a little bit more than letting things in. Obviously, we put the wire through here, and you can see what appears to be a dead spider there. Um, and you tighten that down. Obviously, you don't want to do it too tight because this is a plastic cover, but it will squish that and make a watertight seal. So, um, I'll go get a cord, and we'll wire it up to this, and uh, we'll turn it on. So, I'll be back when that's all done. Okay, so I have this thing temporarily wired up. So, let's go ahead and turn it on in three, two, one. Focus in on the arc tube there. Very nice. So let's go ahead and let this thing warm up.
Okay, so we're at full brightness, and being a 250 watt high pressure sodium bulb, it is very bright. It obviously will light up this whole room just fine, and it, it is. It is a very nice floodlight. It does um, uh, flood the light very evenly um, on the ceiling here as I'm looking at it. Of course, there is a line, you know, across the ceiling because of the design of the reflector, but it is a very nice even uh, distribution of light, no doubt about that. Well, let's see if I can focus somewhere else so you can really see how bright this thing is. That's close to an accurate representation for in-person, but of course it's going to adjust itself as well, and that's fine. But you get to see an example of it. It does have a little bit of hum, as you can hear, but it's not bad, so it's all good. A very well-made fixture, I think, even though it is, you know, slightly cheaper than the older version. I still like the older version much more, but overall, it's a very nice fixture in a very compact size. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this video of this Hubble 250 watt high pressure sodium floodlight. Also, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.